Welcome everyone to the Plumpton School Committee meeting for uh, Friday, the 12th of you March. Need here at all. Um, Disruption that. Again, if, if please keep your, please keep your <laughs> phone on mute. If, let me mute. Okay. Um, so, kicking off, uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order no, imposing no, strict no, limitations. Perfect, thank you. Um, on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Clinton School Committee is being conducted via remote participation. Now, in-person attendance of the members of the public has been permitted, but every effort has been made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order using Zoom either by computer or telephone. Meeting is being recorded for informational purposes only and is not considered a public record. Um, I'd like to start by thanking uh, you all for joining this interim meeting uh, tonight. Our main focus is going to be the review of the revised plan for increase in personal learning at the Dennett. Uh, work began on this plan immediately following the input received during the February 22nd meeting. Subsequent input was solicited through the parent survey, which almost all of you completed, so thank you for that. And uh, that was used to help refine the plan. And I would like to thank Mr. Benito, the entire Dennett staff and the administration for the many hours of work it has taken to develop this plan and for the many hours of work still to do to implement and execute. As in the prior meeting, Mr. Benito will present the plan to the school committee and members will take some time to ask questions and offer comment. Public comment will then be solicited and each speaker is requested to keep to no more than three minutes for a comment or question. Please use the chat to indicate that you would like to ask a question or make a comment and I will recognize you. Please do not use the chat to ask questions or make comments, particularly since those who have joined via audio only will not have access to it. I completely understand that this is an emotional subject for all involved, for parents, teachers, administrators, and school committee members. And while I anticipate this will not be an issue, my expectation is that all comments, questions, and discussions this evening will be delivered in a respectful and professional manner, whether or not we agree with everything that is said by others. Uh, now uh, I'd like to get started. Uh, and given that there has been a lot happening on the legislative front since our last meeting, I've asked Jason to give us an overview and then we'll dive into the plan. Thank you, John. And um, the legislative update is, is quite long, so I'm gonna hold anything that's not relevant to tonight's meeting until our next regular scheduled school committee meeting. Um, I'm happy to announce that the teachers are eligible in Massachusetts for vaccinations at this point. Um, this was in large part due to the work of Massachusetts Senate President Karen Spilka, um, who really pushed for the teachers' vaccination to be um, concurrent with the reopening effort of our schools by the Commissioner of Education. Um, President Biden also announced that any um, pharmacies with federal contracts needed to open up their um, vaccine eligibility to teachers as well. Um, so as many of you know, yesterday was the first day in the state um, where teachers could get vaccines at the state sites, but many teachers did take advantage of the federal contracted pharmacies as early as la uh, last week. Um, I do appreciate uh, Rep. Lenatra's help uh, on getting this to, to happen and to see it into fruition. And, and Senator Moore, who I know is not our senator, but it, she is one of the senators of the Silver Lake Regional School uh, geographical area. And she had a lot to do with this as well. Um, we're still working with the Senate president um, to try and make sure that the last mile plan is, is seen to fruition. Um, this is something that we've spoken about before where local fire departments um, in conjunction with local boards of health um, can get those doses of vaccines directly into our teachers uh, as soon as possible. So that's something we're still working with the governor on um, and President Spilka is taking uh, leadership of that initiative. I'd also like to thank Representative or Congressman Keating uh, for the American Rescue Act. As many of you know, uh, Congress passed uh, groundbreaking legislation that includes $2 billion uh, that will go directly to Massachusetts public schools. 
Um, we are hopeful that that money will be used in the reform and expansion of summer school opportunities for our students and acknowledgement of the loss of learning and the social emotional trauma that many of our students have faced. We're hoping that this can be spent over the next three fiscal years in order to have a robust and ongoing effort to remediate any students in need. Um, we're also asking that the state go back and review its study of switching school start times and acknowledgement of all the brain-based research out there stating that younger students benefit from starting school earlier and secondary students benefit from starting school a little bit later in the day. We've been talking a lot about the loss of learning, and we really think that is one of the key ways that we can address that issue moving forward. We're also asking the state legislature to begin a review of year-round education in Massachusetts and studying other countries and states that have already implemented that, again, to avoid the regression we typically see in Massachusetts schools because of the length of our summer vacation. Again, these are all to address the loss of learning and the social emotional trauma that many students have faced during the closures caused by the pandemic. And lastly, um, working with um, Rep. Lenatra and with Senator Brady and with other members, um, bipartisan, bicameral effort right now to suspend the MCAS um, for the 2020-2021 school year. Bringing the students back is a priority of all of us, um, but making sure that that time those students are spending in school with their teachers is spent on learning and on those social emotional supports our kids so desperately need. Uh, the Mass Association of School Committees did pass a resolution back in November supporting the elimination of the MCAS for the school year. And the board of directors of the Mass Association of School Committees voted to support House Docket 1448, and that would be a legislative action to give Commissioner Riley the right to ask for a federal waiver from the MCAS for this school year. We're also working with Congressman Keating in order to get that federal waiver uh, secured from U.S. Secretary of Education uh, Cardona. So we're working on many fronts right now to try and get our kids back to school in a safe and effective way, get the vaccines to our teachers, and to make sure that when our kids are in school, um, they're maximizing that time with their teachers. Thank you. Um, you just gotta give me a sec here. Area 58 just messaged me, so I gotta tell them to send people over here if anyone shows up, so just give me a sec here. Like everything in the COVID world, it's never simple. Okay. Uh, Jason, thank you. Uh, Mr. Benito, I think the floor is yours. Excellent, John. Thank you. Can you uh, let me know when you are seeing my screen being presented? Yeah, let me just uh, just make sure it's, hold on a second. You should be able to do it now, Peter. Is it letting you do it? Uh, it's giving me a little bit of trouble. Just one second, please. Yeah. It's easier. Do you want to just send me the deck? Uh, one second. Hold on. Okay. Okay. All set, Peter. Thank you very much. So as you can see by the extremely long title, um, it kind of sums up everything we're going to be talking about here. Dennett Elementary School proposal for a full-time in-person return to school at six feet 
as of March 22nd, 2021. That is what we're shooting for. We had some guidance come out from DESE on the 9th um, and basically stated that all elementary schools are to return to full-time in-person learning model by April 5th, 2021. And what they're considering to be full-time is five hours of structured learning time per day. Students may stay remote until the end of the school year. Uh, it did mention that as uh, in this document that remote was probably not going to be an option at the start of school in the fall. And I do feel strongly that um, based on what we've learned over the last 364 days, nothing can completely replicate the face-to-face in-class learning. So I just wanted to throw that out there and we, we're, we've learned that lesson. And another highlight from that document was students must remain six feet apart at lunch or when a mask cannot be worn. I believe Dr. Pru was going to mention something on this slide. Sorry, Pete, I forgot to mute, unmute myself. Um, <laughs> one of the questions that had come up, uh, because this information was just released this week and we had a school committee meeting last night. Um, so one of the questions that has been presented to me is whether or not the school committee would be voting on this change. And so I wanted to give you the exact language from the commissioner and the Department of Education um, that full-time in-person learning will be the default required model uh, and that um, a school committee vote is not necessary because of this um, decision by the commissioner and by the authority granted to him by the Board of Education. Okay, thank you, Jill. Um, the parent survey results were very telling and it, it pointed us even more in the right direction. Um, at the time the survey was sent out, we had 213 students and we had 201 replies, which is absolutely phenomenal. That, that's a, a, an incredible percentage. So that, again, gave us some really excellent insight. Of the respondents that, um, that replied, 84.1 were requesting a full in-person learning situation at a six-foot return. Based on that first survey, 78 students were requesting bus services. I thought it was important to note that typically pre-pandemic, we were averaging about 140 kids on the bus per day, or on the four buses rather. The survey also indicated that 123 students will be drop off and pick up, and typically we would have averaged about 75 per day pre-pandemic. Based on the information from that survey, nine students were appearing to remain remote. And I've had uh, conversations with some of those families. And I think even that information is um, a little bit out of date. I think we have more, more accurate information um, just in the last few days. So going back to our more traditional 8.30 to 2.30 schedule, um, except for masks and social distancing, it essentially is the pre-March 13, 2020 model. If we can call it normal, we can call it somewhat normal. Um, in that situation, the vast majority of students will have access to teachers and peers on a much more consistent basis. And based on some changes that we've been able to think about and expand upon at school, we can remain at six feet in class and at lunch. Um, some of the, those changes included, we have one grade five class uh, that we had a, a, a large number of kids, they're going to be using the art room. The other grade five classroom, which is, again is large, is going to be held in the library. One important note, in order to accommodate our grade one, um, we've used Mrs. McBride, our reading teacher, as an additional grade one teacher. She would do that live in person for the remainder of the school year. So essentially we would have three grade one teachers to accommodate that large group. Uh, this slide I wanted to show folks just so they could understand. Um, three of our four specialists are 0.4 employees, meaning they only work two days a week. So just today we were able to, to finalize this to further include computer lab. If you look on Mondays, there are no specialists. Um, kids will now have computer lab lessons every other week in their classrooms on Chromebooks. So um, 
this is a pretty tight schedule as far as getting kids what we want them to have. Um, an interesting note also, music class with Mrs. Peck is going to be able to be in person. The, uh, the guidance on that was 10, 10 feet with masks. Um, so we have scheduled music to be opposite gym days so that she can be within 10 feet of her kids and with the younger kids do some singing. Um, we can't do any wood, woodwind instruments, um, but Carla has been fundraising and plans to introduce ukulele lessons to our kids for, for in some of the older grades. So um, most of the kids have never seen Mrs. Peck live in person. So that's going to be exciting. That's something else that we can give the kids and being able to figure out the computer lab schedule for Mondays. I think that's, um, that's a huge bonus too. Mrs. Mead said that she'd be happy to go into classrooms, conduct her computer lab lessons and um, just give more to our kids really. Like everything else, as John mentioned, we do have some challenges with all of this. Um, one of the concerns that, that, that I have is um, drop off and pick up. That's a huge increase in students that are going to be dropped off and picked up. Therefore, we're going to have longer lines. Um, I'm working with the bus drivers and with staff to make sure that we're maintaining very safe procedures. Um, I think that's going to be a live and learn and we'll figure it out. Another big change, in order to accommodate the kids in the cafeteria, um, we can't do it with the, our current model of having three lunches. So we're going to increase up to five lunches. The first lunch will be served at 1045. Last lunch will be served at 1230. Um, this is a necessity. We can only fit 50 kids in the cafeteria at six feet, which we can do. Um, this change, we've, I've worked with um, Mrs. Taylor. Our, our kitchen worker, and I think that we can pull this off. The remote learners, we're going to follow what Desi is setting out for guidance as far as they're recommending streaming into the classroom. Um, I'm also hoping to have some of our certified teachers that will be able to do some, some Google Meets or administer some small group instruction uh, directly to children. So as I mentioned before, grades one and five for the Dennett are big. Um, grade five will be split between the art room and library. And again, grade one will be utilizing live teachers for this year only, three live teachers. Another challenge, music library and art specialists will have to travel. We've kind of taken over their space a little bit. The next steps that I see being necessary, it was, it was awesome to get the information that we got from our parent survey, but I think what we really need is some kind of a letter of commitment from the families to let us know exactly what you're planning to do moving forward or in term three. Do you plan on having your students be live or do you plan on having your students being remote? Um, we also need to make sure that we're accounting for every child for busing purposes. So we've devised uh, uh, some information to send home. It's very simple. I just, I don't wanna miss anybody. One or two kids is going to make the difference between whether or not we can do this at six feet, which I still think is very important. So if it is, if everything goes as scheduled, we'll be sending that out to families. Like I said, very short, very sweet. Just make sure that I just want to be sure that we have the information that we need to make this model successful. And I believe that's it. And I will be happy to answer any questions that I can. So we're going to start uh, with the school committee. Um, Amy, you want to start off? Any, any questions, comments, thoughts? Sure. I actually think the plan is excellent. Peter, you did such a great job. And I really appreciate you going the extra mile for the kids. You always do. But I know it's been a ton of work for you. Um, I think keeping everybody at six feet is great and you get everybody back in full time. I honestly don't have a problem with anything in this plan at all. Great job. Thank you. Uh, Mike, any thoughts? I agree um, with Amy. Peter, great job. Um, and thank you for the work on this. It, it, it looks good. This is, this is definitely what, uh, what we wanted. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jason. Yeah, I have to echo what Amy and Mike just said. Um, great work, Peter. Um, I don't think we could have asked for more. 
from you and your staff. And we really appreciate all the hard work and effort you've put into it. Thank you. And Jason, I'm, I'm glad you said it. this, this, I, I don't take sole credit for this. This was a lot of people working hard and, and collaborating and, and trying to think about what's best for our kids. And I'm not sure whether Dan is on. Dan, if you're on, do you have any thoughts? All right, well, um, clear, clearly, I mean, I, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, and yes, as I'd said in my opening statement, you know, there's a lot of, uh, lot of work that's been done and I know there's a lot of work still to do. Uh, for those that are on the call, one of the things I would ask is that, um, you know, when you get that, uh, get that notification out from Mr. Benito and the school about commitment, um, as quickly as you can turn that around, is going to make this the make life for the those at the Dennett that are going to make this magic happen uh, easier um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of work to do in a, in a, a week and a weekend <laughs> is really what we have uh, including bus schedules and 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 reorganizing the, the the school and being able to get all of this done and making sure that everything works the way that it's that it's intended so. Um, you know, Peter, you, I've, already, I've already said this and I've said it tonight. Thank you so much for all of the work you've done with this. Thanks for doing this. Um, and I, I also think that, that it's important for folks to know that this is, I believe, largely the plan that you were striving for after our meeting on the 22nd. And, Correct. Um, you know, uh, and, and I think it was largely what we were going to present tonight, regardless of whether uh, the commissioner offered his uh, thoughts or edict regarding what schools are going to do. Um, we're really lucky at the Dennett that we're able to do it in this way, that we're able to maintain the six feet. I think it's going to certainly help with us being successful at this, even if things don't go exactly as planned and we'll certainly have some hiccups along the way. But um, I think this is, this is right for, right for us at this point. So thank you very much. You're welcome. So with that, um, if folks would be interested in offering any thoughts or comments or questions, please uh, drop it into the chat. Uh, I will recognize you and you can, we can go from there. Okay. Um, Ms. P Ms. Panamos, do you have a question? I do. I just have a quick question in regards to cohort C. I, I love the plan that you guys have come up with. Totally respect everybody at the, high, at, at the school. Thank you so much. I was just wondering if there's ever been a consideration of potentially weaning the cohort C students in, in a hybrid type model. Um, I know we all chose to keep our children home, but I think we might be all a little daunted with the fact of all nothing and then all in. So is there any way that there's a possibility of potentially weaning them in, um, in a hybrid model prior to a full all in? I can jump in on that. Mrs. Pamos, I just saw your email about 15 or probably about an hour ago and I didn't get a chance to reply. That's okay. Um, <laughs> I think the tricky part is that the hybrid model is basically not going to be in existence in about two and a half, well, two and a half weeks or so. Um, I would be happy to have a conversation with you offline if we wanted to try to see if we could work something out. Uh, I'd be, I'd certainly be willing to work with you, see if we want to um, try something out with the kids. That's great. Thank you. Absolutely. Then, I'll, reach, I'll reach out tomorrow. Perfect. And then this is probably a personal conversation as well with kids that are on IEPs. How are their services going to work into um, everybody being back in school? Will they be able to still receive the services that they've been receiving that, that will all remain copacetic? That is correct. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, great. We'll chat. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Okay. Uh Carla Pekinovsky. Hi, everyone. This is um, Carla Pekinovsky. I'm the music teacher. I just want to give a quick thank you to all the parents who donated.
for um, me to purchase the ukuleles for the students. It's going to be so much fun. And I just really wanted to thank you all. I'm blessed to be in such a wonderful community who is so generous to do that. Um, and it's made it made me pos made it possible for me to go ahead and purchase those ukuleles as well as other supplies for them, extra strings, tuners. So I just really wanted to say thank you, um, everyone, for that. All right, uh, Angela Wilbur. Hi, I just wanted to genuinely and sincerely say thank you to all the teachers and staff and Mr. Venito for this plan. It's a huge relief to a lot of parents and I'm internally grateful and um, thankful for you listening to all the parents and our concerns and hearing all the feedback. And I know it was a tremendous amount of work. So I just wanted to say thank you. Um, and a big shout out to Mrs. Peck um, because the ukulele is a brilliant solution for the music thing. And I, I know the kids are, you've done such an awesome job with the, with the music remotely. And I know they're going to be excited to finally meet you. So, and, and thanks to all the teachers, but uh, really it's a huge relief. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Mrs. Wilbur. And, and, you know, I'd also like to thank the parents for participating and being part of this discussion. I mean, this is why we do the meetings the way that we do. Um, to take the input, uh, be able to then work through that and find solutions uh, that perhaps are a little out of the box um, and to get us to where we are right now. Sure. And Nikki Mahoney. Hi, yeah, just to echo what Angela said, a tremendous thank you to Mr. Benito and the staff, all the teachers, everyone who had input and just took the time to listen to you know all of us as well. Um, I know we were all eager to kind of help in any way we could. Um, and I can't imagine you know, those that you had to go through and the time and energy put in, but it's, it's sincerely and gen you know, genuinely appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? All right, um, while we don't have to take a vote. Well, John, John, yep. actually um, in consultation with MASC's general counsel, um, since we're offering a start date prior to what the commissioner is uh, currently mandating, um, I think it would be prudent for us to have a vote on tonight's um, plan that Peter presented. Okay, well, there's even more. That's even, that's even more reason to do it, but uh, I was going to do it anyways, um, you know, because I want to support that. So uh, I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve Mr. Benito's plan as has been presented tonight. Don't move. We'll have a second. Second. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Jason? Yes. Amy? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Okay. Well, it looks like we're able to do the meeting in about as much time as it took us to start the meeting. So again, my apologies for that. Um, hopefully we can just use my Zoom from here on out. Um, we stayed within the 100, so um, we'll have, won't have so many problems next time. Thank you all for taking part of your Friday to listen. Um, we will get a recording of this up for parents who weren't able to attend. Uh, and um, so thank you for that. Uh, if we have nothing else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, Jill, do you have something? Yes, I'd like to thank the school committee and the community for their patience and ongoing support for the past year. Um, we understand what was the, uh, the final vote uh, on what day? Uh, the 22nd of March, a week from Monday. Providing that, providing that everything goes right. But that's, that's the date that, that Mr. Venito is shooting for. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Anything else, Jill? No, I just wanted to thank you, uh, the school committee and the community, as well as our staff and our, our school leader for their ongoing efforts. Right. Yeah, I don't think there's any way we can allow you to say that to us, Jill, without us turning right back around. Um, this has been a heck of a, a freshman year for you as superintendent, um, trialed by fire, no doubt. And uh, 
you handled it with uh, a master level uh, of administrative prowess and, and thank you for your leadership and um, same to you, uh, Mr. Lynch, for all your help uh, through these past 12 months. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. We're working with a great team and a wonderful community. So it, it, it made a difficult situation um, much easier. Excellent. Okay. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mike. Um, everyone, have a great weekend. Uh, it won't be quite as warm as it was today, but I still hope we can enjoy some of the sun. Appreciate everyone. Have a great night. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for everybody for all your hard work. Thank you.